Hi everyone, welcome to the session. In this session, I'll be discussing about how to record elimination of intercompany transaction and also elimination of unrealized profit. Okay, so uh, let's move on to this example. I have taken an example. Let's go through this example, then we will uh, move on to the solution. Okay, so we acquire 80% of shares in S company. So therefore, S company is a subsidiary company. Okay, so P is the parent company. Okay, so parent company has acquired 80% of subsidiary company. Now, you are given that P sold $90 worth of goods for $150 as follows. So, what is the cost of the goods purchase? 90 so P sold $90 worth of goods for $150 as follows. Okay. So you are given the summary. As you can see, sales external customers $100 and to subsidiary company $50. So they are the total sales $150. So which is uh, as for this statement. Okay. And also the cost of goods sold. 60 for the external customer sales, 30 for the subsidiary company sale. And thereby the total uh, total cost of goods sold is 90, which is exactly the $90 purchased by parent company. Okay. So therefore the gross profit is 40 for the external customers, subsidiary company 20, and the total 40. Okay. So when you calculate the gross profit margin, okay. So you can see 40 divided by 100 will be 40% and 20 divided by 50 will be also 40% 60 divided by 50, 150 also 40% So therefore, gross profit margin is 40% And also you are given Subsidiary company has not sold goods purchased from its parent company amount into $50 Okay, so this statement is very very important. Okay, as far as the consolidation is concerned, and also uh, elimination of unrealized profit is concerned. Now, a uh, parent company has sold fifty dollar worth of goods to the subsidiary company. Okay, but this fifty dollars is a purchases for subsidiary company. Okay, this fifty dollar has not been sold by the subsidiary company, which means that fifty dollar worth of goods. Align in this subsidiary's books. Okay, so therefore, as far as the group is concerned, okay, so when you prepare the consolidated financial statement, okay, so we need to eliminate intercompany transactions, intercompany sales, intercompany purchases will have to be eliminated because when you uh, consider the group, uh, group is treated as a separate legal entity, separate entity. So therefore, uh, whatever the transactions within the group has to be eliminated. The group can only record the transactions or the sales made to external parties, external customers. Okay. So therefore, please remember all the intercompany sales and purchases when you prepare the consolidated financial statement will have to be removed. And also, if there are any unsold stocks, unsold inventory lying in the books of either parent or subsidiary company and which carries a profit. Those profits are not realized, those are unrealized profit. So those unrealized profit will have to be eliminated from the group uh, financial statement. Okay, so now let's analyze uh, the, uh, this particular transaction. Okay, uh, and we'll see the separate financial statement. Okay, if parent company uh, prepares their financial statement, how this transaction will be reflected and also the subsidiary company, if they prepare their own financial statement, separate financial statement, how this transaction will be recorded. Okay. Now, when you take the parent company, parent company has sold $150 worth of uh, goods. So, therefore, the parent company sales will be $150. Okay. So, this is their sales. From sales, you need to eliminate the cost of goods sold. Okay. Cost of sales. So, usually the cost of sales consists of opening stock, purchases and closing stock. Okay. So, opening stock, according to this question, there is no opening stock. The purchases, the company has purchased uh, $90 uh, worth of goods. So, the entire stocks 
are sold. So therefore, their purchase is 90 and the closing stock is 0 because the entire stocks have been sold. So therefore, they are, the cost of sales will be 90, their profit for the parent company will be $60. Okay, so when you prepare a standalone separate financial statement, they made a profit of 60. Then we move on to the subsidiary company. Uh, subsidiary company has not made any sales. Okay, so as a result of that, there is no sales. Okay, uh, then the opening stock, there is no opening stock. Purchases, the company has purchased $50 worth of goods from its parent company. Okay, so therefore the purchases will be 50 and the closing stock also will be 50. Why? Because those goods are unsold, not yet sold. Okay, so therefore it's lying in the books of subsidiary. Okay, so therefore that $50 uh, inventory has to be eliminated. So therefore the cost of sales also will be zero. Therefore there is no profit. Okay, so as far as the parent company's financial statement is concerned, they made a profit of 60. As far as subsidiary company is concerned, they made Nothing. Okay. Zero profit. Okay. So when you prepare group financial statements, as I told you earlier, you need to eliminate intercompany transaction because within the group, uh, sales and purchases cannot be recorded in the group financial statement because the group can only uh, uh, record transactions or sales uh, made to outside customers. Okay. So now, when you take this 150, this 150 consists of external customers 100. Uh, subsidiary company 50. So therefore this 50 has to be eliminated. So uh, we have to prepare this consolidation adjustment column. In the consolidation adjustment column we need to uh, uh, remove uh, the intercompany uh, intercompany transactions. Okay. Now for this explanation purpose I have taken debit and credit. So you don't need to follow this. Okay. What you can do is you can put uh, when you remove uh, you can say minus 50. Okay. For this explanation purpose I will just take it as debit and credit. Okay, since sales is a credit balance, if you want to eliminate uh, the intercompany transaction, intercompany sales, fifty dollars sold to subsidiary company within the group. Okay, so that has to be debited in the consolidation adjustment column. Please remember these adjustments are not done in the separate financial statements. Okay, please remember that these adjustments, the consolidation adjustments, are not done in the separate financial statements okay it is done separately in order to arrive at the group balances okay so you need to pass consolidation journal entries to arrive at the group uh, balances okay so now here we are debiting 50 because sales will be a credit balance in order to eliminate what you should do is you need to debit 50 so thereby the group will have 150 uh, sorry, group will have hundred dollars. Okay. So as you can see, this hundred dollar is equal to the sales made to external customers. Okay. Then there is no opening stock, so therefore you can still say zero. And the purchases, the total column is one forty. So ninety plus fifty will be one forty. Okay. So from this 140, uh, subsidiary company has purchased 50 dollar worth of goods. Uh, as I told you, intercompany purchases, intercompany sales will have to be eliminated. So this 50 will be eliminated. Okay. So this will be credited. Okay. So you can see the double entry: debit sales, credit, cost of sales. Okay. So so when you say cost of sales, the cost of sales consists of these three components: opening stock, purchases, and closing stock. Okay, so we have to remove the purchases. Okay, so 140 minus 50 will be how much? 90. Okay, so this is the group purchases. So when you see uh, P sold $90 worth of goods, which means P bought $90 worth of goods. Okay, so this is what we are showing in the group's uh, financial statements. Okay, then when you take the closing stock, there is no closing stock here, but subsidiary company. $50 worth of goods are there. So they are for 50. Okay. So when you prepare the finance group financial statement, can we take $50 here? It's not possible because this $50 consists of profit component as well. Okay. So what is the profit? 
The profit, as you can see, they sold it for 50, the, the purchase cost is 30. The profit is 20. Okay? So what is the profit margin? 40. So we have to take the profit margin, that will be 20. Okay? This 20 is not realized. Why? The goods have not been sold to outside customers. Still it's lying in the books of subsidiary company. So therefore, as a group, the group can't recognize unrealized profits because it's not realized. So therefore, this 20 has to be eliminated. How do you eliminate this? You need to uh, debit the uh, cost of sales account. Okay? So debit means when you take the cost of sales account. So yeah, when you take the, uh, the cost of sales account, when you take the cost of sales account, okay, uh, you have the total purchases of 140, okay. So usually the purchases will be debited to the cost of sales account, and the closing stock, uh, the total is 50. So what is the double entry for the closing stock when you prepare the trading account? You debit the closing stock and you credit the trading account, okay. Credit means you credit the cost of sales account, which is. Uh, 50 closing inventory okay uh, therefore you can see 140 minus 50 90 will be the what you call uh, the cost of sales okay now we are eliminating the what you call the unrealized profit uh, included in this 50 dollar worth of goods okay so when you eliminate you need to debit the cost of sales account why you have to debit here why we are debiting here? Because when you debit here, you will remove the profit included in this 50. Okay? So that's why we debit $20. Okay? So thereby, uh, and also we are just uh, eliminating this $50 here, the purchaser's uh, credit. So we credit the purchaser's. Okay? So thereby, when you take this. Uh, Cost of sales account as a key account, the remaining cost of goods sold should be $60. Okay, so therefore, when you take this uh, 50 minus 20, it has to be 30. Then your cost of goods sold will be 60. Then your profit should be how much? 40. Okay, so in the group financial statement, so what is the profit that we need to recognize? Which is 40, which is exactly equal to. The, the sales made to external customers which is 40 because we can't recognize this 20 profit because uh, this profit is not realized okay so therefore as far as the group financial statement is concerned so what are the uh, two adjustments that you need to uh, make what are the two adjustments that you need to make as far as the group financial statement is concerned uh, you need to eliminate the sales as well as the purchases okay so debit sales, credit, cost of goods sold or purchases, then uh, the closing uh, stock uh, profit, the unrealized profit has to be eliminated. So how do you eliminate? You need to debit the cost of goods sold. Okay. So what is the double entry for the uh, double entry for the uh, removal of unrealized profit? Okay. So what is the double entry? Uh, very, uh, if it is the uh, when you are, when you prepare a consolidated income statement. Uh, you should debit cost of sales uh, 20 and you should credit inventory 20. So this is as far as uh, consolidated income statement is concerned. Okay. So therefore, this entire 20 we remove from the cost of goods sold. This is cost of goods sold. Okay. The entire thing. So we remove 20. So I explain you what we have to debit, okay? Because the closing inventory is credited to the trading account. So to remove uh, the unrealized profit, you need to debit the cost of goods sold. And you credit the inventory, so that will be reflected in the uh, consolidated financial position under current assets, okay? So this is for the unrealized profit income statement. If it is removal of unrealized profit in the balance sheet or the financial function, so that will be to the retained earnings Retain earnings should be debited and inventory should be credited by 20 unrealized profit. So usually the retain earning means 
the profit will be this property is transferred to the uh, consolidated financial position under uh, equity retail earnings. Uh, since the retail earning carries the unrealized profit, you should remove it. So therefore, you need to debit and you need to credit the inventory account. Okay. So this is how you record the elimination elimination of intercompany transaction as well as unrealized profit. Okay. So in this example, uh, I have considered there is no profit, there is no sales as far as subsidiary company is concerned. Okay. In my next video, what I am going to do is I will just I will just include. Uh, sales made by subsidiary company as well okay so we can assume that part of the goods purchased by subsidiary company have been sold so in that case how you should uh, eliminate the unrealized profit so basically uh, in this case what we need to do is uh, part of the goods are sold therefore whatever the profit uh, sold by the uh, subsidiary company to the external customers can be recorded what is remaining has to be Eliminated. Okay, so when you take fifty dollars, uh, I told you fifty dollars includes a profit margin of forty, which is twenty. Okay, supposing let's say this fifty of this fifty uh, part of the goods are sold, so therefore the remaining stuff will be twenty-five. Okay, in this remaining stuff, forty percent has to be eliminated, which is going to be ten dollars. Okay, instead of removing twenty dollars, you need to remove. Dollars if part of the half of the goods are sold by the subsidiary company because half of the goods sold, so therefore those profits are realized. As far as unrealized profit is concerned, these journal entries will change depending on who recognizes the profit. So, in this scenario, the profit is recognized by the parent company because parent company has sold goods to the subsidiary company. So, therefore, the profit is recognized by the parent company. So therefore, when you eliminate the unrealized profit, the, the total amount of unrealized profit has to be adjusted in the cost of sales and the retail earnings. However, if the profit is recognized by the subsidiary company, so in that case, what you need to do is the subsidiary profit belongs to the parent company as well as the non-controlling interest. In this scenario, uh, the B acquired only 80%. So therefore, 80% of the adjustment should be made on the retail earnings. Okay, the remaining 20% has to be adjusted against the non-controlling interest because uh, uh, non-controlling interest uh, has 20% stake on the subsidiary company. So therefore, uh, of this 20 uh, 20 dollar uh, unrealized profit, 80% uh, will be adjusted against the retail earnings, and 20% will be adjusted against now control interest okay so this uh, adjustment will be made when there is a sale made by subsidiary company to the parent company okay so that adjustment has to be made uh, when there is uh, when there is uh, sales made by subsidiary company to the parent company okay so in my next video i will be discussing about this okay so uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you soon later bye for now